Retro Gaming Roundup. So recently, I've been going through the garage whilst on lockdown, looking at some old consoles, and I found my old Voltmus database. I purchased this in uh, 2012 at Play Manchester, and yeah, it was a cartridge-based system I'd never seen before. I kind of didn't really know anything about it. It was about 20 quid, I think. So I just bought it, got it home, played it once or twice. It was pretty rubbish. I had one game for it. It went into a box somewhere. And uh, fast forward to 2020, I've got it out again and thought I'd do a little bit more research into it and make a video. So this is it. The Voltmus database video on Retro Gaming Roundup. So here it is, the old Voltmus database. You've got three buttons on the front of the console here. Uh, reset and you've got a select game button and start game there's an on off switch here quite handy and as you can see it's a cartridge based system the cartridge quite nice how it kind of continues the uh, the case kind of thing it completes the aesthetic this is air sea battle cartridge number one each of the cartridges were numbered I think there were 29 from what I've read and obviously yeah each one numbered in sequential order this is uh, Air Sea Battle, number one. We've also got two controllers here, which again, there's a nice little indent in the uh, case where the controllers go, a bit like you'd get on an Intellivision. And if you think the controllers look familiar, that may be because you had a BBC Micro. And Voltmus famously made the joysticks for the BBC Micro which is why they look so similar you can see as well you've got these little overlay cards that used to uh, come with the with the game so as well as the air sea battle cartridge I've got the air sea battle overlay card here to go on there which is very handy because uh, there's only one button in the game and it's fire and so two of these buttons are fire the rest of them don't do anything for this game the Joystick, I think the, the first one's had a lot more use than the second one. The first one is kind of, when you move it left and right, it doesn't actually jump back to the centre like it should. It's not a big deal, though, because I don't really play it very much. It's not a very good console. If you flip it around and look at the back, you can see that everything's been hardwired in, including the controllers. You've got a mains lead hanging off the back of this PSU that sticks out the back. You've got an RF lead that's hardwired in there. Another little interesting quirk here, you've got a label still on the back here with Voltmus's telephone number and address. They're based in Bulldock on Church Street. Quite a small company apparently with no more than 12 people working there. Quick name check, all the information that I found about this console I found from two websites, retrogamers.org and binarydinosaurs.co.uk. I'll put links to the articles that I used for my extensive background research in the description below, should you want to find out more. Had a bit of a job trying to get this thing tuned in to get some footage of it. Started off with my Amstrad CRT TV. If you think you recognise the TV, by the way, it's... Uh, the same one that we used in our music video for the British IBM back in 2012. Settled for a Mycomi flat screen. It seemed to be the most stable of the, the ones that I tried. And here it is, Air Sea Battle. First one, game one, move left and right, press fire, depth charge goes down the screen. You try and hit stuff below you. Tap the select button and you can select a different game. Game two, exactly the same, but now you're playing two player. You can move both ships left and right with the uh, each controller, drop depth charges and compete for a high score. Game three, you no longer move left and right, you just drop the depth charge and control whether the depth charge moves, moves left and right, so you kind of use the joystick to move that around. No sound by the way on these games, I'm not sure if the Voltmus had sound but these this game does not have sound. And yeah, lots of variations on that. And then you get to nine and you're now flying through the air. So the air part of air sea battle. And as you can see here, it's a two player game. Uh, one of you is, is basically their fire button drops bombs out of the plane. 
And the other one, the fire button, fires missiles up from the submarine, which, of course, as we all know, is how submarines work. And I don't know what part of air-sea battle this is. I guess it's the battle part where you're just this stationary missile launcher on the ground here firing upwards. And then we've got a two-player version of the same thing. And if you keep tapping select game, you eventually get to 20. Tap it one more time and it cycles round to one again. So 20 variations of three games there on air -sea battle. I would say that's good value for money, but I don't really think it is. If I'd have bought this back in the day, I would have been absolutely livid. It's awful, just awful. I've had no enjoyment at all out of revisiting. I say revisiting, it's not like I had it back in the day, but yeah, it does nothing for me, this. I don't think I really enjoyed doing the video, and the only reason I actually did it is because Mike said to me, look, if you want to continue hanging around the RGR booth at upcoming expos, then you need to start putting your weight. And I want that Voltmus database video done. So there you have it, the old Voltmus database. If you had one back in the day, let us know about it in the comments below. Retro Gaming Roundup.